Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. And with the transmitters, we are able to gather data on where the turtles go after they're done nesting for that season. Head, thorax, abdomen. He's like something out of a storybook. Cool. He usually has a trail of kids following him. It feels like jelly. For a kid, that could be magical. It was one of the ideas of LBJ, the concept of people realizing what life was like without electricity and running water. Drummer Canyon is, is nice because it is so close to San Antonio. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchase of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. From the Gulf Coast to the mountains of West Texas, biologists have followed to the best of their abilities the habits and lives of Texas wildlife. Now scientists can better pinpoint exactly where wildlife travels by using the newest GPS technology. From 12,000 miles above the Earth, satellites are helping us track wildlife with detail and ease. Each spring, Kemp's Ridley sea turtles come to the Texas shore to perform one of nature's wonders by laying their eggs. Months later, their young hatch and begin their journey through life. Every new hatchling gives hope that this endangered species won't go extinct. The mothers have long since returned to the sea but their exact whereabouts a mystery until now. We're conducting this tracking because we want to get an idea about the habitat usage by these adult females. We want to see uh, where they're going in the marine environment, which is where they spend the vast majority of their life, where they're going for migration, as well as for foraging when they're done nesting. We are affixing satellite transmitters to Kemp's Ridley turtles that nested on the Texas coast two, five, two. so we can follow their migratory pathways and look for any foraging hot spots in the Gulf of Mexico. Once the turtle is in her trance while she's actually laying eggs, we will take a, a swipe sample from her carapace and then we will put her in a transport vehicle and take her a brief ride to the turtle laboratory at Padron National Seashore. We put a little towel over the eyes of the turtle because sometimes it, this helps to calm the turtle. She will have a blood sample that is withdrawn and there will be small biopsy tissue samples taken for use with various studies. We have to sand the shell. We put down the first layer of the epoxy, which is cool as it dries, and then we'll fix the transmitter. Then when it's on there very well and solid, we will paint the surface to help prevent barnacles from adhering onto that area where it has been applied. The whole process takes about three hours. Every time we release a turtle, it is a meaningful experience to us. This is an endangered species. 
we want to make sure that it's released back on the beach in very healthy and vigorous condition. Many people have been involved in conservation work for Kemp's Ridley Turtles. It's a cooperative effort that makes it special, and it's one step closer towards hopefully recovering the species someday so that it can be enjoyed by future generations. The public can actually see the tracks for these nesting turtles. They go to www.seaturtle.org and look for the Padron National Seashore Kemp's Ridley Tracking Project. And then they will see a map for all of the turtles that we're tracking for this year's transmitters deployed. And then they will be able to actually click on the links to the specific turtles and see the individual maps. Over 500 miles away in the mountains of West Texas, another species fights to survive. Historically, the native Texas desert bighorn sheep occurred in about 16 mountain ranges. But by the early 1960s, they were gone, mostly due to unregulated hunting and disease. Texas Parks and Wildlife and others have worked to restore the bighorns to their native Texas mountain ranges. But capturing and tracking these elusive animals is challenging in this vast West Texas desert. The way we capture these is, is through a net gun and a helicopter. And what they do is they'll go out and uh, somewhat selectively uh, route them in the direction that they want, and then they fire a net gun on them. They fly up and they bank and they come back and they turn around. And it's almost like a like a fast-paced roller coaster ride. We have sources, uh, in-state sources now that we can go to and capture from and, and, and relocate to other to other mountain ranges. You look up at the mountain and here you see the bubble of the helicopter and then you see the thing attached at the bottom and you know they're sheep. And as they get closer, there they are. Okay. Once at the processing station, they're aged. You want to take a picture of the team? Yeah. yeah. You take fecal samples. They also take a blood samples. Four plus. Four plus. And those radio collars are, are there to help us monitor the bighorns. GPS, 0434. So that's where we get movement and uh, identify other variables such as travel corridors. The restoration effort has been going on for more than 50 years. And, you know, it's now paying off where we have surplus populations. Uh, you know, they're thriving. We're almost halfway there. Our goal is to have all of the 15 or 16 mountain ranges that have critical habitat for them to have a big horns. It wasn't a couple hours ago that they were at Elephant Mountain. Now here they are in their new home. Now they'll be here for, for, for the public to enjoy. And that to me is, is wonderful. Our satellite collars that we have now have really uh, kind of amped up our game as far as technology goes because they allow us to monitor bighorn movements pretty much real time. You can watch them anywhere in the world. And it's pretty fascinating how they move from one place to another. We see that ram, he crosses into Mexico, travels down the mountaintops quite a good ways, at least 25 miles from the release site. The ewes kind of doing their thing, staying, staying around pretty close to the release site within those you know, seven mile radius. Really, really interesting how they move like that. Satellite collars will play a key role in the future. Biologists now learn more about our native and endangered wildlife faster and easier than ever before.
And the more we know, the better and smarter we can work to conserve our wildlife for future generations. We're at Government Canyon State Natural Area in San Antonio, Texas. Burma Canyon is, is nice because it is so close to San Antonio. It's, you know, several thousand acres. You could come out here and get 20 miles of mountain biking in, you know, and be 10 or 15 minutes away from your home and uh, feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. All levels of riders will enjoy Government Canyon. Uh, with the front country, it's a good place for the beginning mountain biker to just learn control on a, on a level single track trail. And then whenever they're ready to move ahead, they can take one of the easier backcountry trails and you can just continually build. You're always gonna find a challenge out here. Now we can get out here, uh, get out in nature, get some good air and uh, forget all your troubles basically. <laughs> He's like something out of a storybook. Oh. He usually has a trail of kids there following him. Wait, here he is, here he is. He knows everything. And this is a boy because the males are blue. For a kid, that could be magical. Awesome. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Meet Craig Hensley. Abdomen, Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. This is his office. What's one of the three body parts? A kind of wizard of wild things. Has anybody ever eaten bee spit? He helps connect people with nature. Now, who caught this one? We have too many children today that never spend any time outside. And for a lot of these, these children that don't get to spend a lot of time outside, they really are huge moments in their life. So for me, it's just about engaging them outdoors. Plus, it's not bad to you know have little kids come up and tell you if they think you're awesome. I got something! We get a lot of visitors uh, just for the programs that Craig offers. Oh, look at that! He's an attraction in and of himself. Oh, what did you catch? We love Craig. Oh my gosh, he's so full of knowledge and brings nature to life and makes it interesting for kids. And then you see this tube right here? They actually breathe through that tube. Whoa. We've taken night tours with him and learned all about the spiders at night and the crawdads in the river and how they glow and caught all kind of insects. And, and uh, my daughter said it was the best day so far of the it summer feel, vacation. It feels like jelly. Yeah. He encourages yeah. us to fix stuff up that we never expected really to even touch. <laughs> realized existed. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Once they get excited, all of a sudden their parents get engaged and uh, they become like a superhero to their kid because they've never seen them run around with a butterfly net. Oh, oh wow, that's what? awesome. Those kinds of interactions to me are Ooh. very powerful <laughs> and give me a great deal of satisfaction that perhaps what I'm doing is, is um, the right thing. Cool. There you go. If I ever have a job and I'm not as passionate as Craig is, I'll definitely feel like I'm missing out on something. Ah, you're a member of the club! The highest compliment I can get for a child to have had a wonderful time and be able to share that with me, those little tiny moments. A dinosaur! Nicely done! Oh, it's a baby! It's a baby! Oh, yeah. That's beautiful! all very basic. No running water, no electricity. Sour Beckman depicts life as a working farm in 1915. We don't recreate. We just continue the traditions and the, and the lifestyle of that period of time. Oh, the cat's going to try to move in. He's thinking about it. 
it was one of the ideas of LBJ to actually have this happen. The concept of people realizing what life was like without electricity and running water. And he said, people aren't going to know that if we don't somehow preserve that. These folks didn't have electricity, so we can't have an electric motor on our mill. We're going to try to be pure to our farm down here. We can't cheat our grandparents, can we? You know, these people, they ate a lot of lard, they ate a lot of fat, but they were working so hard that it really didn't make them fat because they burned it all off, didn't they? They worked their way through all those calories. Is that easy work there, bud? No. No? <laughs> That's probably one of the big things that now is really coming around, especially the last couple of years, just what life was. What are those basics of what do you need to live? Do you need all the stuff? I had a little boy. He, was, he came with his grandmother, and he was whispering something to her. And so she goes, well, ask her. And finally he did. He goes, well, he goes do you have a TV? And I said, a TV? I said, what's that? And he said, well, it... It has, it has cartoons on it, and he goes, and it has a remote. That's life. <laughs> you know? Keep away from the gals and those good fellow pals. As long as you've got money, they'll be through. Treat everyone fair, always be on the square. And everybody everywhere will welcome you. Settle down for life with a good little wife. Remember that today you'll always Most of the day was spent just cooking meals or working on a meal for another day. Now look here. I'll show you what's making this stove work. Oh. <laughs> Is that hot? And who do you think's job might be to keep that wood box built? <laughs> it's your job, yeah. Well, the important rule on the farm here was if you don't work, you don't eat. Chicky, chicky, chicky. It's amazing the, the reaction that, that people, when they watch us feed the pigs or feed the chickens, when they watch us milk the cow, they're awed that they've never seen that happen. The closest they've ever come to most of this stuff is in their supermarket when they get a carton of eggs or a box of butter, and this opens their eyes to where it really comes from. Those folks, will you gain a big appreciation for the work that the, the people that settled this area, how they had to just to survive in this environment. You have a great little pair of mules for this up here. Good girl. When you ask them to trot, just pop them gently with the rain. You with me? Mm -hmm. The first thing I would do is I would teach the mule to go forward, step in there. Walk into the shoulder, step, shift, come right back around, and you step into him, step right in behind the shoulder and look at him. Got it? Looks easy, doesn't it? Now what you need to do is to practice it. Cluck to him, cluck, cluck. He's not going to pay any attention to you. <laughs> Let me try this again. Step behind the shoulder. Now, no, that's good. T quit clucking. It's easy when he does it. <laughs> I think one of the things that President Johnson wanted the public to see here was how life was like when he grew up and what made him do many of the legislative acts that he did. The founding fathers dreamed America before it was. The pioneers dreamed of great cities on the wilderness that they had crossed. For it will be the dream that we dare to dream. can see why he felt the public would gain the sense of compassion for history 
and how it can shape a person and how you can make a big difference in life if you really choose to. You don't have to start out being wealthy or anyone in particular. You can mold your life to be whatever you want and he happened to grow up to be a president. And has made a big impact on America and Texas and this community of the Texas Hill Country. We seek a nation where every man can seek knowledge Hi. and touch beauty and rejoice in the closeness of family and community. You go to the Sarah Beckman farm and you take electricity and running water out of your lifestyle and see how people survived and then how creative and inventive they are and then all our benefits that we have today that came from all of that. It just awes me when I you think back at how far we've come as a society but how important it is to thank our grandparents and all those aunts and uncles and people that brought us to where we are today in life. Thanks to the movies, bats have an undeserved reputation as being dangerous creatures that can get caught in your hair, or even worse. Of course, we now know that bats are highly beneficial, but this change in public perception has been a long time coming. First impressions are often hard to overcome. Vampire movies have done for bats what Jaws did for sharks. That is, cause a lot of unnecessary fear and misunderstanding. Vampire bats are real creatures, although they don't prey on people, preferring livestock or poultry. And only one specimen of a vampire bat has ever been recorded in Texas. It was found in an old railroad tunnel near the Texas-Mexico border. Bats are not likely to fly into your hair or any other part of you, since they possess a unique ability to navigate, even in the dark, using sound waves. Known as echolocation, this is the same method some marine mammals use to navigate the seas. Bats are not only adept at avoiding obstacles, they are just as skilled at catching small flying insects as bat colonies prowl the night sky for their next meal. Bracken Cave near San Antonio is believed to be the largest bat colony in the world. Estimated at 20 million bats, this colony consumes 200 tons of insects every night. Many of these insects are agricultural pests. Some bat colonies, like this one at Old Tunnel Wildlife Management Area near Fredericksburg, have become popular destinations for wildlife watchers who come to enjoy a spectacular sundown show. As beneficial as bats are, you should never touch a bat, especially if you find one lying on the ground. They can carry rabies. So, like with any wild thing, bats should be left alone to continue their nighttime flights across our Texas skies.
This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchase of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram.